Shabbat Shalom once more. There is a well-known Talmud story, one of my very favorites, that goes as follows. One day, Rabbi Eliezer was caught in a dispute with his fellow sages about an oven that they could not decide if it was ritually pure or not. On that day, Rabbi Eliezer bought them all sorts of proofs of his correctness, but they were rejected. So he told them, if the law is as I say, may the carob tree prove it. The carob tree was uprooted from its place a distance of 100 cubits and some say 400. The group of sages said to him, you can't prove anything from a carob tree. So Rabbi Eliezer responded, if the law is as I say, may the waters prove it. And the water in the aqueduct began to flow backwards. The sages scoffed, one cannot prove anything from an aqueduct. Rabbi Eliezer replied, if the law is as I say, may the walls of the Beit Midrash, the house of study, prove it. And the walls of the house of study began to cave in. Rabbi Joshua rebuked these same walls. If Torah scholars are debating a point of Jewish law, what are your quality qualifications to intervene? The walls did not fall in deference to Rabbi Joshua, nor did they straighten up in deference to Rabbi Eliezer. They still stand there at a slant. Rabbi Eliezer finally said, if the law is as I say, may it be proven from the heavens. Then there issued a heavenly voice which proclaimed, what do you want from Rabbi Eliezer? The law is as he says. Rabbi Joshua stood on his feet and said, Lo bashamayim he, the Torah is not in the heavens. We take no notice of heavenly voices, since you, O God, have already at Sinai written in the Torah to follow the majority. Rabbi Natan subsequently met Eliyahu Hanavi, Elijah the prophet, and asked him, what did God do at that very moment, at that very moment of debate? Elijah replied, God smiled and proclaimed, Nitzchuni banai, Nitzchuni banai, my children have triumphed over me, my children have triumphed over me. Now, this story might feel a bit ironic considering that just this morning at Shavuot, we celebrated the giving of the Torah quite literally from the heavens. Our Torah truly knows how to set the scene regarding this reception describing in vivid detail in Exodus 20, from which we read part this morning, of how the Israelites witnessed the Ten Commandments being given to Moses on top of a smoking Mount Sinai in a flurry of lightning and thunder, surrounded by blasting sounds of the shofar. Yet I want to bring to our attention a small detail that might get missed among this dramatic mix, found ever so slightly beforehand in Exodus 19. Just before the Israelites are set to farewell Moses on his journey up the mountain, we learn, Vayichan sham Yisrael neged hahar, and the Israelites encamped in front of the mountain. We might be thinking to ourselves, sure, what's the big deal? We already know that the Israelites are in the desert and that they set up camp at the foot of Sinai. You might, however, have caught that word Vayichan to encamp which is in the individual form. To make it a little more clear, this is the first time that Israel is referred to as a sing singular entity, as one united people under one God. Our great medieval commentator Rashi catches this too and believes that this verbiage was intentional. For this was the first moment that we as Jews were considered ish echad belev echad, like one person with one beating heart. On the surface, doesn't that sound idyllic? Wouldn't the world be an entirely different place if we were all on the same page all the time? Perhaps there'd be no heated arguments, less tension, more peace, and perhaps the walls of the Beit Midrash would not have come caving in. Nonetheless, what Rashi does not say is that Whilst our hearts may have been as one, our minds, 
Not necessarily. There is further evidence of this in Mishnah Eduyot, which asks of us, Balama mazkirin divrei hayachid ben hamerobin, ho'il ve'en halacha ele chidivrei hamerobin. Why do we preserve the opinion of the singular among the many, especially when the halacha leans towards the opinion of the majority? The Mishnah will go on to answer that this is because so that a Beit Din, specifically one that is great in number and great in wisdom, can use such an opinion as a precedent in an appropriate situation. In other words, nowhere in Rashi's brief but insightful interpretation, nor in our Mishnah, does it say that we have to think the same or do the same or feel the same or be the same. Just that, if we are fortunate, we experience moments as a community where our hearts feel aligned and pointed in a harmonious direction. Unity, then, might not always mean being in complete agreement or that one entity or person is always right or even favoured over another. However, our text might be teaching us that it is rather about respect of each other's opinion and the courage to stand together at the foot of the mountain, ready to face whatever comes next. In that way, the heavens and the earth can meet the walls of the Beit Midrash remain standing, and from the foot of the mountain, we can climb upwards and onwards. So with that image in mind, last night over Erev Shavuot, with full hearts, we were privileged to celebrate eight incredible confirmands as they reaffirmed their commitment to Torah and Jewish life, this time on their own terms and of their own accord. As part of the proceedings, they reflected on how, in their own growing and maturing, their interpretations of what Torah means in their generation can differ from that of their parents, no matter how they will each endeavor to still respect the heritage of their families and to honor them too. Mostly, the confirmands reflected on how truly excited they were to make Torah their own and how honored they were to take their well-earned place among those who they love and those who have come before them. We, their community, in turn reassured them that they always have a safe space among us to question, to doubt, to learn and to thrive as they continue their Jewish lives. In forging that powerful and sacred bond between the confirmands, their community and with Torah, under a chuppah set up before the open ark in the main sanctuary, they passed a Torah scroll around, gently handing it over to one another from friend to friend and symbolically, Lador Vador. As each scroll, as each took the scroll into their arms, they repeated these words, which are my blessing for you on this evening, which may sound familiar from the blessings for Torah, as we farewell Shavuot, continue welcoming Shabbat, and today and every day receive Torah in respect, in wonder, and in love. Baruch atah Adonai, noten ha-Torah. Blessed are you, Adonai, the one who gives us the precious gift of Torah. Shabbat Shalom. We turn to page 139 and we rise, ke'ishechad belevechad, as one for the Aleinu.